Hello, welcome back to Great Love and Sex through IFS. Um, we are back here with our special guest, Kel Monroe, Ask a Bye Guy. And um, this time. Playing the piano. I'm not even sure if he's on the screen. Yes, he's yeah, on he's the on the screen. screen. Yeah, tickling the ivories and the ebony. And, and I know he loves to tickle other things too. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Coming back over, um, we left come over. Back, come back yeah. over. We left off the other video saying we're going to discuss feelings. Yeah. Feelings, feelings. Which some of you are so afraid of. I know. Yeah. Last video, we were talking about how to really have this deep, fulfilling connection and to feel the connection um, with other people. And therefore, you know, that might be, uh, might help one to get a relationship or mm -hmm. to have a certain type of uh, uh, connection. But we really just want to feel connection. Mm -hmm. and, and with ourselves too. Right, with ourselves. And so I think yeah. that's what one of the things that Kel was saying, in order to do that, we really have to be able to drop down into our bodies and feel something mm -hmm. and to, to be embodied in order to have that, that relationship that's fulfilling. Otherwise, we might be up here and connecting on this level, but there's something that we just feel like is missing. Missing, yeah. And, and you brought up the term intimacy elevator. Yes. So mm. why, why don't you explain to the audience mm -hmm. what that yeah. is? In contrast to the relationship escalator, Mm -hmm. um, which is this uh, sort of outside structure, it's the water that we swim in, it's the air that we breathe, sometimes without really analyzing it or thinking about it, and that's the, the intimacy, um, es the relationship escalator is where you have these milestones of dating, maybe it's implied that it's non-exclusive or, or monogamous, it doesn't always have to be, but then there's this, you know, getting closer, then maybe there's moving in together, and then there's maybe uh, getting engaged and that definitely happens before you go in on property together But then there's definitely that and then there's you know, maybe you know marriage and kids and, and so on and each of these milestones stands for a proxy for intimacy We sort of believe that there's more intimacy here than there was here um, Whereas the reality of, of people is that we live in the present and we feel whatever level of intimacy and connection and safety with our partners at any given month, mm -hmm. and that's where the the, the term that, that I sort of thought of uh, that exists sometimes in the midst of us going through the relationship escalator, whether we know we are or not, is the intimacy elevator. You know, we all have uh, the ability to have depth and, and sort of get, go higher in intimacy and, and sort of clock in more knowledge of a person and more awareness of them, more vulnerability as you, just by virtue of spending time, but elevators can move in two directions and they can move at different speeds. Let's say there's been some trauma or some pain. Well, you know, just to be safe and, and come down, you know, you might withdraw some of your intimacy if there's been some breach of trust and those kind of events. Um, and people have different ceilings. Like my elevator might only go nine stories high and I'm dating somebody who's a bloody skyscraper and they're, they're just able to go to these heights of intimacy and I may not have the hardware. Maybe I haven't done enough therapy or who, who knows what. Or, or, you know, maybe we're both skyscrapers but with this particular other person, for whatever reason, pheromones and spark or, or commonalities, I, o I only am willing or want to go this high with someone. I'm like, let's go to the 30th floor together. I know you've got floor 50 and, I, and you know, she, she or he has floor 50, but you know, this is just kind of where, this is our equilibrium. So what's a real example of floor 30 versus floor 15? What would that mean? What would that conversation entail? just so that the viewers can like, okay, mm. what does that mean in my yeah. love life? What what floor am I on? Well, and you know, that, that's, a, that's a tough one because I'm coming at it from a perspective actually of a lot of non-monogamous relationships. There's a lot of people in the polyamory community who are non-hierarchical and they sort of, they're just like, yeah, I, you know, I don't have a primary partner per se, I just have, you know, I have three or two main partners and I'm, I'm good. You know, I don't need to have this hierarchy. And yet, and yet, I see so many people in this community operationally 
giving preference and deference to maybe one particular person or another particular person based on their level of enmeshment. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, um, by just by clocking in time, quality time with someone, you just, you know, get to know them a little better and maybe you feel safer around them and you know, for whatever inscrutable reason it has to do with our, our chemistry with someone, the intangible, mm. deeper, primal, feelings-based stuff, that whole murky thing that we are going to talk about. Yeah, so that, that primal, feelings-based stuff. I know that you used a term before called leveling down. Yes. Which is, uh, I interpret it as getting out of your head and getting into that, that gut stuff, mm -hmm. that body level stuff that's going on, that there might not be words for, of course, you can talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things we want to do to be in service to our viewers is to really help them understand how to level down, how to get mm -hmm. into that gut feeling level. Yeah. Uh, because a, a lot of people in our culture, you know, myself included, have been trained to be up here mm -hmm. and this has been this has been very prioritized at the disservice of really being able to to connect on a feeling yeah. um, gut primal mammal level yeah. which is why just through mm -hmm. our conversation I, I felt like mm -hmm. uh, my metaphor of this intimacy elevator might need to be expanded a bit because you know there's there's going down into the subterranean level of our feelings right. you know the the foundation how, how strong is you know that our first language before we have you know th um uh, before we conceptualize uh learn how to talk as kids mm -hmm. is is feeling you know uh physical closeness uh, touch the body being held or embraced you know th these are all so live and and powerful in ourselves and maybe there's you know how can you go down in with someone into that realm of of you know getting deeper you know why is intimacy always this heady intellectualization you know we always use metaphors of high and low but there's also just our body and how we really f how does someone make us feel that's i mean my interpretation of this your intimacy elevator is about when you're in a relationship or situationship or dating, whatever it is, you're trying to connect with another person and inevitably at some point you're going to reach some sort of like frustration mm -hmm. or disagreement or they're ghosting, anything. Yeah. Um, a flaking out, not being totally honest and you're trying to get an answer, disagreement, tension. whatever. My definition of getting deeper into the feelings mm -hmm. is really sharing how I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm feeling just like you've taught me. We have many conversations. Every time that I run into some sort of challenge, you're like, Emily, stop, get, get out of your head. And mm -hmm. what are you feeling right now? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so that's been a great learning for, okay, this person didn't text me back. This person didn't say what he was going to say. And this has been repeated two or three times. I'm not playing this game anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get vulnerable and just say, I'm feeling ignored i'm feeling disconnected this is probably not your intention but i want to just let you know that's what i'm feeling mm -hmm. and and i think as much as we can we should have a conversation but we can't do that maybe send a voice text as opposed to just texting it mm -hmm. so they could feel you through mm -hmm. the energy of your voice mm -hmm. right so that's my definition of going down. I love that. And you got into the, the how of it too. And I think there's even a step before being able to state how you're feeling. What's the step before? You, well, the, well, the step before that is actually feeling it. Oh, yes. 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 yes actually That's feeling it. Being it. able yes. to feel it. You yes. have to be able to feel it before you're able to say it. Because if you ask someone how you feel and they're in their heads, they'll say, I feel like you're not treating me well. You know, That's they'll say feeling. a thought, yes. right? But if you ask someone a feeling, who's feeling a feeling, I feel this deep, like, pain in my, in my stomach, and it feels horrible, and I'm not sure why I feel that way. Like, that, that... That's a great one. That is getting physical into... Physical reaction. Like, yeah. that is the physical reaction. A feeling is actually something that is physical. It's mm -hmm. not a thought. Well, it's I'm not a, I feel stabbed. that, or I feel like. Yeah. yeah. It, is, it is like, this is, this is the actual feeling that's yeah. in me. Well, and I, I think one of the things that people can Google is they could Google feelings wheel. Okay. If you can't use a certain adjective or you can't 
like, okay, I'm feeling sad. Mm -hmm. And everything that I read about sadness, we feel sad about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But what's really underneath the sadness? Yeah. I'm feeling scared. I'm feeling not loved. I'm mm -hmm. feeling rejected. There's yeah. something underneath the sadness or the anger. I'm feeling angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about the anger per se, what's underneath the anger. So if you print out the feelings wheel, which there are many images for, and I've used this before when I'm like, okay, what am I really feeling? Because there's mm -hmm. so many mm -hmm. different adjectives for joy, for frustrations, for anger, Worry, for sadness. Worry, anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And if yeah. You, I feel embarrassed. Right. And underneath that is usually a story. Yes. Like a personal story, yes. maybe something that happened that didn't work out and left you feeling exposed or something yes. really, possibly really difficult. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I what mean... I have experienced from you to, uh, to, based on uh, not hearing from you, based on my text not being responded to repeatedly, mm. I feel scared that our, disconnect, that, that our connection is disappearing. I, I feel no, scared. Right. I feel scared. See that I can feel when you say that. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's I feel that. Really scared. Yeah. 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 Wow. And you're right. And I can I can tell by the way when you're saying that I'm like, yeah. oh, this is something that's real for yeah. you in this yeah. in this moment, which is yeah, it's really. Um, oh, even I'm sharing. To bring that. Mm -hmm. Percy. Mm -hmm. There's something that I want to express, and I'm really scared to say it to you because I'm mm -hmm. scared that you might reject me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if if I share what I'm feeling? Yeah. So part of it is also asking permission. You want to make sure that the person is in the right space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. To like hold you. Right. So that they know you're not going to be attacking mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Because one of the first things you say, mm -hmm. we need to talk. Mm -hmm. That's a right. classic one. That's right. That's no. just, I dare anyone to send a text to their loved one that just says, we need to talk. It's like, whoa. Oh, right. yeah. What if you said, I'm feeling scared? Instead of saying, I need to talk, I'm feeling right. scared. I'm afraid, right. Yeah. So, yeah, this is beautiful because, I mean, it gets at the how of, I mean, speaking for emotions can definitely help you to help you to feel them because if you need to speak for them, you're going to feel more for them. I, you know, I remember last video, Kel mentioning a journey that he had to go through in order to, to get in touch with his emotions. And I'm sure, you know, each of us, you know, had to do that on our own. But I, you know, I know the question that a lot of viewers might have is, okay, how do I get into this feeling body that I can use or that I can, that, that can be a vehicle? For me to connect with other people and have the full connections that I want to in my relationships, in my sex life, in my love life, in my uh, business life. But I want to feel alive and mm. I don't know how to do that. And those are the kind of yes. questions that I get a yes. lot. Right. Yeah, because ultimately at the end of the day, when we reach the end of our life, when mm -hmm. we reach midlife, we've gone through a divorce. It's about, like, do I feel alive? Do I feel accepted for all parts of me? Mm. And, and, and I've got, I had a conversation with uh, somebody about this the other day. I got to age 50, I'm in the middle of a divorce, I got all the material trappings of wealth, the car, the, 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 the million dollar house, the fancy education, I'm just like, how come I'm feeling horrible? Mm -hmm. And then, and then I, I, I asked him deeper questions and I said, yeah, it's because she never, she said that I was not totally transparent or honest within our relationship, I held a lot of stuff in. And I said, did you feel safe to reveal everything that you're thinking? Like mm. sharing your inner dialogue, even when you're pissed at her. Mm. Like, no, she never made me feel safe to do that. Mm. Well, I said, no wonder you feel like you got all this money and stuff and you're still not fulfilled because you're not being seen for all of who you are. You want to tap into your emotions. He says, yeah, I was never tapped into those emotions. I want to feel for a change. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you have to reach a point, you know, you may be 35, you're like, no, I'm not ready to go there. Mm -hmm. And it may take another 15 years in a divorce. It might. Mm -hmm. It might. No judgments. Yeah. And that, that feeling of safety is so important. Um, we we want to be seen and we want to see the other person. And well, for me anyway, it was, uh, I realized that I, I had to be safe with myself. Mm -hmm. and that there was a lot of work to be done 
to feel my own feelings about, you know, those stories uh, that come from the past that are informing why I might be triggered that someone hasn't texted me back in whatever arbitrary intervals yes. that I have set up in <laughs> my, in games. my yeah. you know, my own system of, uh, of this person didn't text me back in, in a day. Well, for other people, it's three days. For other people, it's one hour. But in either case, you've got three different people that feel anxiety that the other person hasn't texted back in whatever interval. You know, and what's behind that is a story, a feeling of, uh, of lack or, or worry, a fear of abandonment. Mm -hmm. But what's underneath that is just my own history. And to delve into that involved um, me going through a journey through therapy. And, I, you know, I could intellectualize and conceptualize everything with words on like a feelings wheel to, to my heart's content. But I had to, you know, do a, a deep you know, reconnaissance mission into my own feelings. I had to feel grief of, uh, you know, relationships with my parents that never happened, that involved trauma, that I can't ever get back. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's never going to happen. And it's crazy, obviously, we're not time travelers. It's crazy. Well, of course, you're, you know, time passes. You're never going to be, you can't go back again, so to speak. And yet there's a this uh, mass of, of grief and possibly shame if you've experienced any level of, of trauma or disappointment. It doesn't have to be, you know, some titanic, monolithic feeling of, of trauma. It could just be a series of disappointments. Um, and it, um, it just all kind of goes in. But if I can sit with my own uncomfortable feelings mm -hmm. and be at peace with myself and be vulnerable with myself, it begins with me and then I can bring that comfort, that confidence, that emotional literacy with myself to someone else mm -hmm. uh, and feel more confident so that, yeah. you know, and as a result, things get less triggering. Other people, mm -hmm. they don't text me back in two hours, two days, one week, whatever interval. And it's like water off a duck's back. It doesn't matter anymore because it's not about me. I'm, I'm, I feel confident in myself and in, mm -hmm. in my own uh, worthiness. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a lot of shame, uh, grief, and, and tough stories that a lot of us carry with us. Mm -hmm. Then know. how would you, would you share something with that person that hasn't texted you back in like, let's say two weeks? Will you, will you call them out on it to put closure, if, that's, if closure is what you want? Or yeah. would you like, ugh, just, let's just leave it? Well, so what I would, what I would do, uh, in, in this in that hypothetical situation mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to assume anything of the other person per se because I can I can feel within myself that I'm already spinning up the conspiracy mm -hmm. machine wheel you know the uh -huh. conspiracy theory wheel it's like oh you know they're not really that interested in me I'm just like you know hold my horses mm -hmm. slow down I don't know where mm -hmm. they're at whatever maybe something happened I can asking questions it's just like hey to, to begin with it would just be a friendly ping like hey it's been x amount of time haven't heard back maybe that's not typical you know usually hey is everything okay on your right. end right you know just let give them exactly. an opportunity to do something and then try to let it go mm -hmm. sometimes i let it go but i haven't let it go but that's inside me mm -hmm. and i know that so i I do let it go, but I have to sit with my uncomfortable feelings because I know that's all they are, probably. Right. That's really beautiful because you, what, what you're getting into, Cal, is you know what a lot of people come and talk with me about is, is you know I've I've been in therapy for 16 years. <laughs> and, and all that time. And all that right. Well, they're saying that, that I've come to understand myself. I've come to understand myself intellectually, mm. but my therapy has been informative but not transformative yes. and what you are discussing is the thing that actually transforms is getting into those feelings and spending time there yep and actually allowing those feelings to flow and change because they will when you feel them and when you're in them the metaphor that's coming to mind when you're describing what you went through is in the in the chakra system in the first chakra the earth Mm -hmm. Like being able to hold and be with the emotions and stay with them. Yeah. And then that allows you to get like having that, you know, having that grounding and being able to stay with emotions allows this flow of emotions to happen within you, which right. is water, you know, the second chakra, which mm. is, you know, the emotional system. And literally like when I feel emotion, like I, I feel in, in every, in any given moment, 
I'm feeling emotions and it is like liquid and fluid like flowing through me. Yeah. And so I can feel that very, it's you know, very palpably in ways that I never used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, right. and the other important emotions that people really need to feel, especially if they have never been through some deep therapy, is mm -hmm. a lot of people have like, oh yeah, my parents divorced. Oh yeah, my father died when I was, uh, when I was 10. Uh, oh yeah, my, my mother was an alcoholic. And, and, oh yeah, I was made fun of at, um, at school or I was told I was too dumb or too fat. Oh yeah, I've dealt with that. The question is, have you really dealt with what that five-year-old part, seven-year-old, eight-year-old part, the deep sadness and the anger mm -hmm. and the embarrassment and the shame that mm -hmm. those younger parts of you are actually holding inside of your body? Mm -hmm. Have you been at a therapist office or a coach's office where you have actually cr like cried out or mm -hmm. screamed out the mm -hmm. anger of that younger party mm -hmm. that actually felt because if that part of you is frozen in the past and you never mm -hmm. really dealt with it and logically you're thinking, oh no, I'm okay. I just swept that under the rug. Right, right, right. we, we don't need to visit that. Right. I know what it's about. So therefore, it it's should be done. Right. And, yeah. and you know what's going to happen? When you have a partner mm -hmm. and that person wants to express, you're like, oh, oh no, 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 no. I have, I've never dealt with that, that feeling mm -hmm. inside of me. How could I even hold space for yours when you want to share all of that? Mm -hmm. I had a friend actually say that to me. He was in a hot and heavy relationship. Mm -hmm. And then this person who's a therapist got really vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, he says, I had to break it off. I couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. And he knew I couldn't take holding space for her emotions. She wasn't blaming. She was just like, I'm feeling that. He's like, I couldn't take it. I mm -hmm. never dealt with what she was feeling inside mm -hmm. of myself. Right, so that's the earth, yeah. that's the groundedness yeah. of being able to first hold space for your parts and hold yes, your feelings your own. Yeah. and to be, hold, then you can hold it in a compassionate and gentle and loving way. If you can hold it in, a, in that way in yourself, first of all, those feelings feel, feel more free to come up so that you can experience them. And then you can begin to communicate what's, what's there and you know actually the rich way that you that you that you experience it and the communication of it is sometimes in the feeling of it sometimes you don't need words sometimes you can look at someone and someone can be right there with you without having to True. it's 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 totally an embodied thing another layer of it is that i know people who don't like to talk about feelings but they can certainly feel them Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and, and we were discussing, like, mm -hmm. for some people, and, for, uh, and maybe it's more men, uh, that they know how to show their feelings mm -hmm. through sex. Mm -hmm. That's where they feel good in mm -hmm. expressing themselves. Right. Maybe that's part that's of the reason why. That's their safe Exactly. And, right. and, to, and to, like, debunk a myth, like, I've met people of, like, a lot of different genders who... who yeah are in that category of, you know, I don't talk about feelings or I don't do feelings, but might be able to reach those feelings in, in a sexual way. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. yeah, it's a conditioning that's, that's, that's in our culture. Yeah. It's gonna cause us to, to become cut off from our body and cut off from our feelings. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, what can awaken feelings and move that, that energy, that water energy Besides something that is very primal, one of the most very primal things that we yeah. that we know of. Let's say this is a um, heterosexual relationship, mm -hmm. for the sake of um, and just describing sure. this, uh, and exactly. this happens yeah. in same-sex relationships too. Let's say that the guy is really expressive in sexual play, and that's where he feels good. He can't really verbalize like feelings, you know, outside of that, mm -hmm. and then. He wants the woman to meet him where he's at, but some women have body image issues or they're not feeling perfect or feeling fat or PMSing or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, but you're so sexy. And, you know, but she's like worried about the stomach or the cellulite or whatever. So she's not fully embodied like the energy of I am a sexy goddess. Mm -hmm. He knows that that's possible in her, but he can't make her like, whoo, mm -hmm. here I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she can't meet him where he's at, mm -hmm. and then it, it becomes a mediocre mm -hmm. experience. He right. wants her to fully like express her raunchy part, her dirty talk part, her yeah. whatever. And in my experience, it's that it's that person needing to to dissolve those protectors, yes. which 
in a lot of cases, unfortunately, it happens in the setting of like you know drugs and alcohol or, or whatever. You know, drug and how often to disinhibit. Yeah, to disinhibit. Yeah, so yeah. So yeah. it's to get a, high that sec- yes. that that embodied yes. place. And I think that's why a lot of people you know use that those substances or overuse them if that's the only way that they can become embodied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And temporarily, yeah. So, um, so I think have we have we beaten this down, or is there more? Uh, Have we learned how to how uh, to do that? Express our our feel our own feelings. Uh, It's it's interesting because you know get into the body. I I feel like we've just. Like we've just, you know, introduced it, which scratch is good. We've the scratched surface. the surface. Yeah. Yes. Which is great. If I'm a viewer and I'm watching, I'm thinking that, huh, I I do want a way to get into my body and I kind of mm. am looking for a a you know, transmission of, of how to do that. And, you know, I think there are several ways that we've been doing it with, you know, with one another, like, because we're feeling as we're talking. For me, like, I have to, I have to move my body. I shake sometimes. It's just like, like, if I don't feel flow in me, Mm because that's, those are my emotions, like, I will get up, I will walk around, I will do yoga, I will, you know, dance, you know, if I need to, you know, hit a pillow or shake or growl, like, it's kind of getting back into the, the animal nature of me. Yeah. To yeah. really get into those emotions, you know, that can lead to a quick turnaround for me, and it will move energy. And it's physical. You're moving. It's physical, right? You know, for I think for a lot of people that, that do dance, sports, yoga, if people don't do that to whatever extent, you know, one is able to, you know, any Absolutely. opportunity to to use the body to inject your emotion into mm-hmm. that and like the best performers we've ever seen whether that's a slam poet on stage you know like one of the really good ones that is a brilliant writer and makes you feel something you'll notice they're using their body and they're using their voice it's yeah. even even their voice themselves is a physical you know the the way our vocal folds move and and the way yeah. we uh, push out air uh, well, people. you think about the best singers. Yeah, I mean, chorus, you know, exactly. They, singing, you know, Lady, posture. Lady Gaga mm-hmm. and Beyonce. Yeah. You're, like, you're, you're feeling them singing from their soul. And that's and because touch. they've let the emotion into their movement art. Yeah. Yeah. And as a, you know, we were talking about takeaways that might help people. Is that if if you're someone who's not using your body, maybe mm-hmm. you're, you know cubicle job or you're in an office setting or mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. or there's just you know maybe you're a real estate agent and you're buzzing around all the time but but there's a deliberate form of motion maybe it's uh, contact improv classes I have a partner who does flamenco she's like the only white girl in like this flamenco class but she just is absolutely connected with it as a way to move and shake and feel um, is to activate that sense of the physical yeah. Another way to do this is think of somebody that you're feeling frustrated with. I wish I could have said this to my boyfriend or that text didn't, didn't come through. Use that situation and say, like, what am I really feeling in my body? Even mm-hmm. if it's somebody that, that feels like, okay, he hasn't texted me back in three days. Even mm-hmm. something as simple as that. Mm-hmm. What are you feeling? Mm-hmm. Like that exercise where you, you mm-hmm. write the angry email yes. and you don't send it. You're yes. just writing yes. it out. Yes. You know? I'm feeling... You, that is that's, great. Yeah. 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 And using lots of you statements, which we're not supposed to do in real conflict. Right. Like, supposed to use, well, yeah. Start you, saying the stuff yeah, that's yeah. not sayable. Like, yes. Start saying that and you can, you can even asshole. sit the person across from you in your mind. Yeah, and, like, put a, just put a pillow that. there and just be like, you know what? Like what you didn't even text me. It's like you don't even care or whatever. So what are and you feeling? And as you do that, that moment, as you yeah. do that, those those feelings will start to come up. And, and, and where is it? Is it right. here? Mm-hmm. Is it you know? Is it hot? Is it you know? Does it make you? Do you notice that your mm-hmm. hands are balling into fists or you, you know shaking a little bit? Right. You know you can take your temperature, so right. to speak, and and notice that. Absolutely. Yeah, and take that feeling and what needs to move through the body? Is it punching a pillow? Mm-hmm. Is it crying and feeling that sadness? Uh-huh. And it, you know, crying it out is very effective. Yeah. And I know more. And I'm a really hard pill to swallow given masculinity culture. Yeah. Like as a as a male cis male identified yes. person, it's just it's important to not to underestimate the amount of work and and how and the payoff how valuable it is to get into this work. But it's mm-hmm. it's uh, for a lot of men, it's a Herculean effort. 
and it's, this is not a two-week process. Mm -hmm. No, In no. fact, I've learned at a certain point it's it's an ongoing process. Yes, mm -hmm. and the thing is, for those males who are identified with success in terms of material things or uh, Madison Avenue or my mm -hmm. parents told me if I got the right education, the right job, uh, a big 401k and the mm -hmm. house and the beautiful wife and you know the check, right thing. Check, 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 check. Mm -hmm. And if you reach a, a point in your life, maybe it's your late 40s or 50s, this is when mm -hmm. it usually hits, you know, midlife crisis. How come I'm not as happy or fulfilled as I should be? Right. That's because more than likely you're not in touch with their feelings and you probably have uh, only cried once or twice in your life. Maybe you were at a funeral of your mm. grandparents or, yep. you know what, that's what's missing. That's why you're not as happy and fulfilled because you've shut down parts of yourself and you haven't felt. Mm. And that's why mm. you don't feel, more than likely you don't feel feel mm -hmm. as close as you want to feel mm -hmm. in, <clears throat> on that intimacy elevator. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, getting to that point you want to be. And, what, and the more emotionally intimate you are with yourself mm -hmm. and with your partner, and you can't get there until you become emotionally intimate with yourself, that's where the joy starts to peek through. It's right. not about the latest car or the latest electronic gadget. Yeah. yeah. So it it is a lot of work. Yes. As you're saying to you know get to to drop those walls and to drop that that those you know I'd say in me like you know emotions used to feel like it was just like kind of you know solid chunks and now it's just like a, a you know more of a you know progressively more of a a flow where you know emotions can just flow here and I'm very like can be sensitive to emotions of others. I think what's helpful you know it sounds like we've each been through journeys in that way and it's important for people to know what's on the other side of that journey yeah. why are we why are we doing this work you know when we you know yeah. when, when you open up into that field of emotions what's there yeah it's it's to build real intimacy mm -hmm. real emotional intimacy realizing that for some people it's going to have to be physical sexual intimacy first to feel safe to open up in the emotional mm -hmm. realm and that's why for some people after the orgasm there's that pillow talk when you're mm -hmm. feeling really mm -hmm. connected mm -hmm. and what if you can bring that feeling of oh, feel so close mm -hmm. into the everyday life when you're not in bed mm -hmm. and to be able to speak at that level mm -hmm. and that's where the challenge is for yeah. a lot of people and that payoff is uh, just higher caliber connections with people. Mm -hmm. If I've learned to sit with my uncomfortable feelings, to grieve a, a past relationship, you know, maybe, maybe uh, you never grieved uh, the fact that, that your, your pet died yeah. when you were 12, but that pet was like the only thing that you had that was a stable influence in your life that, that loved you amidst the storm of a tumultuous family. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking for no one in particular, no, that's totally me. That was one of the, but you know, it's, it's, it seems silly. It's like, oh, it's, it's just, not. it's just a pet. Yeah. You know, I had to, I had deferred that grief, um, or it could be a loved one, or or whatever, um, and I, I had to feel all that. But on the other side of those feelings is having a literacy of the range of my own emotions mm -hmm. and not blaming myself or shaming myself and being comfortable being around myself, keeping my own company and and realizing that, you know, I'm I'm kind of okay to be with. I'm I'm worth it. I'm it sounds cliche like that. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people, people like, like me. me from that old SNL sketch from mm -hmm. a million years ago. Um, but it's kind of true if I'm comfortable with myself, I don't blame myself anymore. I recognize that, you know, they may not be excuses, but there's all these explanations, these stories for why I struggle with X, Y, and Z, why I haven't been able to click on a relationship, why I've been divorced three times, and you know, there seems to be these repeating patterns. And I release judgment of myself and start to you know, re uh, get in touch with all those feelings. Suddenly, I'm just more comfortable with me because I, I know that you know, it's okay and I'm enough. And then when other people mm -hmm. say things that would have triggered me before, or they don't text me in a certain interval and that would have triggered me before, mm -hmm. now it's just like, oh, that person has their own story. They have their own entire landscape. Yeah. And it probably isn't about me. 
And you know what? Even if it is, I can handle it. You know, maybe right. they've got a beef well, with and, me. And, and, and that's why and that's when okay. they go into their temper tantrum, yeah. instead of instead of fighting in that energy, which many of us have been guilty of doing because we feel like we need to get defensive, it's like, oh, this is just their part. Yeah. The younger part and it doesn't have to be aloof and disconnection. No. It can be with all compassion. Right. Mm -hmm. Just say, uh huh. Yeah. I get yeah. it. I mean, and I'm resonating as, as I'm hearing the two of you talking, and, and for me, like, what's on the other side of of really feeling and you know breaking down and feeling those emotions is this life itself like if you're in a place where you're not feeling completely alive and you're not feeling completely um in the moment like yes intimacy comes with that but you know really being able to walk through and experience the world around you and have like wonder and amazement mm -hmm and joy like feel like the the newness of being a a kid again and curious and you know when it comes to relating to others like there's curiosity about everything but there's curiosity about other people and like whoa who is this being and yeah and truly being able to feel all of that um you know in addition talking about great love and sex in a sexual experience feeling the whole freaking rainbow mm -hmm. of of uh, you know, emotion and feeling and chemistry and physical feelings that you didn't know were there and, you know, types of orgasms that you didn't know was th were, yeah. were there. Like your body has to be open in order to feel that and get to that yeah. level of connection. And it cannot, right. It, it, if you can really drop into your body, you, you right. can release that busy brain where, you know, that sometimes sabotages us in the middle of sex where, you know, you have this, mm -hmm. you know, this should happen or, you know, that sort of order of operations, like right, first they go down on me and then I do this and then there's that because of, uh -huh. because of that porn that I watched and it's very, you know, it's got its own, like the porn escalator. Mm -hmm. Porn escalator. The porn escalator. <laughs> That's that another video. <laughs> Different right. video, yeah. Even the, converse, <laughs> even the conversation we are having right now, we are embodying intimacy. Yeah. And, and I hope for, for the viewers that are watching, it's like, okay, how do I get into those deep conversations that those people are having on video? They're talking about their childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, Cal is yeah. like owning like all of the stuff that he felt uh, that he didn't feel and the dog and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. Right. And even on this level, just, right. Yeah. Right. I mean, even on this level, there's um, just, th there are the places in us where we have barriers and reaching that, reaching that level. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that because you and I have been able to, you know, with starting the channel, we've been able to reveal, even from our very first conversation over a year ago, mm -hmm. we just kept peeling it back because we felt safe with one another. Sure, because we're trained in IFS and, and we've done the work. Oh, cool, sure. It's, it's, it, it, uh, the intimacy between us, the friendship intimacy was built like from that first day. Right. And and so I'm and the feedback that we get from our channel is that people love the chemistry that you and I have. This is not manufactured chemistry. This is chemistry because we truly love each other as friends. Because mm -hmm. I know all of his deepest, darkest secrets and fears, and he knows mine. We've broken down in front of each other. Right. And that's intimacy. And right. that's why we get along so well, and that's why we respect each other so well. So if we are having a temper tantrum. It's like, okay, what's going on? Right. It's not about me. And and the banter that we have, you know, it shows on camera. So right. that's the same thing that can happen in your relationships when you fully drop down and it just becomes natural. Right. There, Starting there from is a first flow. date. Because yes. that's what's on the other side of it is you can have a first date where you're you're sitting loose and easy in yourself. You're not judging someone because you're not judging yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can let them be who they are. Right. And just kind of take it all in. Uh, there's a poly, polyamorous concept called price of admission. Yeah. You know, we always have this phase where we idealize someone and we caricaturize them as the answer to all of our hopes and dreams. And, you know, we put these char characteristics on them. But when you let someone's words speak for themselves, but you have that ability to connect so quickly, just like the natural chemistry that you have, even just mm -hmm. as friends. But, you know, imagine going into a first date or a second date and you're just you're cool it's not that you can't be a little nervous that's like fine but you can actually you can feel the nervousness, feel that nervousness yes. and that actually gives you energy a lot mm -hmm. of performers will talk about that they take that nervousness they feel yeah. it and then they get up on stage and i used to be a slam poet as you know and so i can speak to that a little bit and you can channel that 
-hmm. into your in enthusiastic, curious questions that you yeah. offer to someone and, and the way you respond to their yeah. questions in that well, dialogue. You know, what, what I have found really liberating is that in the past eight months of really actively dating, you know, mm. after a long-term marriage, you know, I, you know, I don't know whoa, whoa, what the heck yeah. to expect. And, and every date where I have met somebody in person, coffee date, drink date, mm -hmm. I have no nerves. And I'm just like, whatever, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting, it's like, whatever's going to flow is going to flow. Yeah. And I'm just, sometimes they'll ask questions like, oh yeah, and, and, you know, I'm going off in my expressive self. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, was I too much? You know, I was like, mm -hmm. whatever, I don't care. They're just if seeing I me. Was, if I was, too bad. Then that's too much. And you know what has happened yeah. is that I, right now I'm batting a hundred. Every mm -hmm. single date that I have been on, I mm -hmm. have been asked out a second date. Mm -hmm. I haven't said yes to all of them because I just felt like there was something mm -hmm. that I was attracted to or whatever. But that reinforces to me, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just being me. Right. Well, mm -hmm. this kind of success that you're talking about, you know, success in, in dating. Yeah. Um, comes from the, the fact, that's one of those things that's on the other side of that wall and going into those... Right. Emotions and becoming emotionally vulnerable with yourself, holding your own emotions, yes. right. and yes. then being willing to allow others to see those emotions. That is what lies on the other side of that. Emily's like dating, like love life is, you know, blowing, like she can get a date with whoever she wants. Uh, yeah, I can tell it's like the same yeah. What I want to tell way. other yeah. men is they think there's this scarcity thing about dating. And I'm mm -hmm. like, can, can you visualize a world where there aren't enough calendar slots for you to fill up with dates if you, if you want it? That's there. It, it is, is totally there. there. Oh yeah. my God, it's totally well, there. Well, and, and the number one feedback that I get from after these dates is, wow. What you described in your profile and your pictures and the energy of the real me that shows through these pictures and all these pictures have smiles because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. I because I like myself. I've done the work. I know my mm -hmm. vulnerabilities. And they say you are exactly like your picture and your profile. Mm -hmm. So that authenticity mm -hmm. shows through. Mm -hmm. But that's not gonna be easy to get there until you've done the work mm -hmm. to own what happened to you, the shame. I had to own the shame of growing up Asian, not, not feeling enough. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you know what? My creator made me who I am and it's because of all the pains that I had that has mm -hmm. like resulted in this colorful, edgy personality. Mm -hmm. And that's how you got your superpowers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know what? Yeah. If you can't accept these parts of me and the fact that I'm not afraid to yeah. be, yeah, if I want to, you know, embody that sexy part and dress flirty, which mm -hmm. I often do, it's like this is who I am, and the way that I walk in, I know it like gets them from the get go, mm -hmm. and and then it's 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 my decision to say, okay, can you? Can I? Do I even feel you as someone that can hold hold me? can like mm -hmm. be in that mask and to say, Emily, I've got you. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel any of that, because that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for, I'm right. going to surrender into my, like, my natural feminine essence. And if I can feel the gravitas of that guy, mm -hmm. like, you know what, you might scare me a little bit, which is okay, which is actually kind of hot, mm -hmm. but I'm going to take a risk. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to ask you if I could actually kiss you at the end of the date if I'm feeling some sexual energy. Right. That I find mm -hmm. really hot. So when a guy knows how to take a risk with me mm -hmm. and is actually able to own it, that mm -hmm. turns me on. Yeah. So that's cool. I mean, a little plug because I know that Kel does this kind of coaching to help people yeah. within the realm of, of dating and love and online dating like actually present their authentic self yeah. in a way that, oh, that can be felt and that's... that's yeah attractive and you know so similar kind of coaching that um that emily and i do and we have workshops so yeah. i mean if this is something that you're interested in you know hey all of us have contact yeah. information that you different, can different types of business cards different yeah. tools for different jobs yeah. you know like i'm sort of a dating life coach but but what i would say to anybody is that underneath Mm -hmm. all the the techniques which isn't play acting like I can help someone revamp their online dating profile you know sure. what kind of pictures are going to attract people to you yeah I mean we curate our lives you know we, we get dressed in the mornings we groom ourselves and that's to present to other people sure. but let's find the picture that has authenticity and instead of a technique where you know you wait three days to get back to somebody um, because then they'll feel that sense of that you know uh, that you're worth it 
And you don't have to artificially create that. The reason it's going to take you three days to get back to someone when they message your online dating profile is because your life is actually busy and you do have some hobbies and you have some things that light you up that aren't just dating other people. So I would coach people to start to fill your life with the things that make you passionate. What makes you angry? Does something get you angry about the world? Well, you know, go join a meetup group about that and then talk it out or volunteer mm -hmm. or whatever. And then suddenly your calendar is full of not just dating. And then when you get that message on your online dating profile, it actually will just naturally take you a, a day or so to, to get back. But you know, you're not going to ghost on them. It shouldn't take you 14 days, you know, but what's underneath that, uh, it's not a technique, is a full life. Right. And it's uh, the, um, you know, being able to feel the emotions to be comfortable with yourself, which is where a different tool for a different job is engaging with a therapist, someone who can escort you safely, you know, whether it's through IFS or, or you know, CBT or, you know, um, what's the uh, neuro, not, uh, EMDR. There's just a million different uh, things that can get you to release these things and embody your 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 most authentic self, which is what's so contagious that when you walk into a room or people see that your online dating profile is as advertised yeah. and that you, you are, you embody yourself, your personality. And look at that smile. Oh my God. You're just like, it's, it's so, so real. It's, it's, it's effortless. It's, it's, um, unselfconscious. And when people pick up on that, that's why you're successfully dating. I'm, I'm just because you're successfully you know, dating yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Actually. It's like you know, you show all your quirky parts. And, yep. And uh, and and it's really yeah, be be your authentic self. But the message is, it's really difficult to be that real authentic self until you have invested the time, energy, and the money mm -hmm. into a therapist or some sort of relationship coach yep. or life coach. You've got to work on yourself. There's, there's really no shortcut. You've got to find the younger parts of you that you've forgotten about, that's still left on the playground when you were made fun of for being too chubby or something. Because mm -hmm. that's going to affect you. And that's, those are the parts that are going to show up in midlife and you're like, mm -hmm. I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. It'll so, keep you from feeling alive. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and you got to feel alive through feeling into your body and, and finding all those emotions you have not felt from the past. Yeah. Because they're still point. there. They're still yeah. there. Yep. So get out I'm of here. I'm st still finding them. I haven't arrived. Oh, totally. There's no arriving. Yeah. yeah. There's no arriving. <laughs> and and that's Jeez. what's sexy when two people are are in that uh, personal growth uh, way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Ooh, they just triggered me. Oh, what's what what's gonna grow inside of me because of the way they just criticized me? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. So have we have we beat this dead horse? One, la one, last one last thing. thing. Yeah. A lot of people say to do the work, and I, I sort of like to reframe that. It's hard to do work. These are uncomfortable feelings, yes. but I, I would, uh, therapy, self-development, I, I might like to reframe it as an art. Yes, it, it is. You know, because yeah. we already be have jobs for mm -hmm. God's sakes. You know, we have all this flipping work to do. Like, I'm tired of doing work. But, you know, to work on yourself and to learn to connect with other people and feel your feelings is artisanal. It's an art of being, the art of being or some such. I'm sure that's already hashtagged and patented yeah. left, right, and center, but... It's going on an adventure. It's yeah. exploring. Yep. Yeah. So it, it it's can be... It's skydiving. It's like emotional... At, at it's the skydiving, it's, it's like spelunking. Crap, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it's actually, you know, getting out there. It's not... Right. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not work. After a while, it's not going to feel like work. It's going to feel like, whoa, exploring and, and something that's deeply... Uh, moving and fulfilling, just yeah. like play. Yeah, and, and it's also very risky because mm -hmm. you're gonna risk the other person pissing the other person off as you play in this like dance in this new dance. Yeah. Okay, I think I think I need to express it this way, and I have made so many mistakes in trying to express my vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Whom I thought I was expressing in the right way, but. Or you and your, your partner are entering into non-monogamy for the first time. You're just yeah. discussing a new paradigm shift of your relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something where I come in with one or more people in a relationship of some kind. And that's that scary territory. It activates mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. You know, yeah. and we go through many paradigm shifts in our whole lifetime. Yeah, so there's, it, it, yeah. you got to be willing to fail. 
Yeah. And all of us have failed mm -hmm. many, many times. Even I may be like putting out this smile. Trust mm -hmm. me, I failed and cried many times. Well, yeah, yeah. That's that's the the willingness to embrace the fullness of life, which yeah. includes your your emotional world, includes um, the things that you've been through, the 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 trauma, the grief, and you know, and the joy, and the excitement, and the curiosity. And so, you know, you the results... You naturally can sense those people. You you feel so safe to be around. You feel confident mm -hmm. but not cocky is another cliche mm -hmm. out there. But it's because you have the humility, because you've been through this chrysalis, you know, the yes. long dark night yes. of the soul, yes. or mm -hmm. maybe multiple long yeah, dark multiple, nights of, the, yeah. so, of yeah. the soul, mm -hmm. to get to that space. And, you know, people who have that self-deprecating sense of humor, who, who tend to bring other people in, and they're yeah. confident, and they're charismatic, but it's never at the expense of put-downs. Mm -hmm. You know, like in, in uh, spoken word performance or art, we always say, you know, it's about punching up. You know, you never punch down, like make fun of a of a yeah. lower group. You know, you can critique society yeah. and, and sort of the, the more powerful, but you know, when you embody that, that comfort, people can naturally sense it. Yeah, I mean, the, the greatest mm -hmm. compliment that Percy and I were ever paid, last weekend we did the workshop, and this couple came in, and this man who has never watched our YouTube channel, never read a uh, psychotherapy book or self-help book, mm. his girlfriend invited him to come to our workshop. Wow. And then from within the first five minutes, he doesn't even really know who Percy and I are. And he's mm. like, I cannot believe I'm just like sharing my deepest pains and with, you know, what I'm experiencing here, why I'm here. Yeah. I'm, I'm being so vulnerable. Something about your energy. You guys are just sitting there. I feel there. safe with you guys. Yeah. I feel safe with you guys. Yeah. And and so that message is like when you've done enough work and you own your authenticity and your vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. that shows in whatever aura you put out. Right. So the combination of me and Percy, some reason it just like this guy's like, I've never even been this vulnerable. It, mm -hmm. It's like we, we see a therapist. We haven't felt this way with a therapist. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who you guys are. Right. It was <laughs> and, beautiful. And that creates... Amongst other things, but it creates a dating life and a sex life that, that that's on fire. Yeah. Because right, it's pe people know and can feel when yes. someone is truly alive, and people yes. are gravitating towards life. People want life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a freaking beautiful thing. And so that's you know something that we're just committed to growing more more in. Yep. Yeah, 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 and I think, you know, with, with our very dating experiences, and especially in the last eight months, all these characters that have come into my life, is, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> I, I have become a richer person, and then, of course, mm -hmm. you know, you have your myriad of the dating experiences, and we bring all of that mm -hmm. into, like, oh, okay, I know exactly how you're feeling, mm -hmm. and I can em empathize with that, because right. I've been there. Right, and yeah. those every every interaction with a human being is is an invitation to to grow more alive. Yes, yes, yeah. and and so we encourage you to do whatever it is that you need to do to start growing. Whether it's watching this channel and and um, just spending time watching, I don't know. By now we have like forty something videos, learning about that, reading IFS books. That's a start. You don't necessarily have to go to therapy per se right now. But getting the information right. from online or books or talking to, to, mm -hmm. to friends who are in similar fields can be a good first step to take yeah. to get into your body, into your emotion. It's so true. Feel. We really are the company we keep. Yeah. And surrounding yourselves with other people who have a growth mindset and marinating in you know, YouTube channels and discussions and just letting that permeate, just get in there on an emotional level. Yes. So there's, a, there's a lot of intellect, you know, you, you're so good at talking about things yes. on an intellectual level and using metaphors that help people understand, but yeah. people can sense that it's safe to feel. To, yeah. And, and which just is what watch. any good therapist could and should do. And exactly. you may or may not feel that exactly. with your therapist. Maybe it's time to change up. Who knows? Yeah. But... But it's all know. about attunement with the therapist. I mean, half of the battle in healing is just attunement. So that couple felt so safe with us that in four hours, their feedback was they got more out of. Yeah. They, they, we totally permanently tr shifted the, the the challenge in their relationship that they have been trying to fix mm -hmm. for the last five months with the therapist and with yeah. uh, with going to personal growth workshops. But because of the way we attuned to them, our right. natural energies, they trusted us even at that deeper level right. as we asked really deep questions. 
And, and so hopefully you can gain some insights from what we've been sharing in this conversation and start to do the work. Yeah. And if you have any questions, by all means, just um, post them in, in, in the, uh, in, in the comments, comments below. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and subscribe to the channel. And then you'll be hearing more about uh, the online courses we're going to create and the uh, future in-person workshops. That's exciting. So until next time, take care. And thanks, Cal, Thank for you. being Thank with you. us. This was a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. Bye. Great stuff.